What's up, everybody? How are you guys? Some fun. We're gonna cut some hair together, guys. Whatever platform you're on, the more you chat, the more you get to know people. But also, it just grows the show. So I really appreciate all of you that do that. All right, we're gonna pop on over here to the mannequin head, and I want to know in the chat. I got a thought, but uh, you know, might not be the same as you guys. So we're gonna cut layers. I'm gonna section her out real quick. So I'm gonna go straight down the center. Start off my parting. Those of you that have taken my virtual hands-on classes. This will look very familiar. Consistency is key. So I separate it just uh, side to side first, center parting. I'm gonna separate my fringe here. And what I'm looking for is just to get down to that hairline. So I'll show you guys what that section looks like. I'm trying to separate the hair that wants to fall forward and the hair that wants to fall back. Take a little bit more. There we go, perfect. So look, when you look at this, this hair all wants to fall to the side. This hair all wants to fall forward. That's the first part of my fringe. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side here. I'm just looking to match up that hairline. That all wants to fall like that where we're at with the rest. And that all wants to fall to the side. So now I've got my fringe and whether I'm going to cut a fringe or not, always separate it. Twist it up nice and tight. Get it out of the way. I don't need this till the very end. I love it. Sweden, Salt Lake City, New York City, England, textured bang shag. Like it. Textured bang shag. Should we cut a textured bang? Yes. A textured shag. Yes. So here we go. So now we're going to section the front and back. So I'm going, I'm looking for the hairline. I want to follow this section all the way down, match it up with the hair that wants to fall backwards. This hair all wants to fall to the side. Hello from the Netherlands. We got John. What's up, John? All right. So now I comb this straight out, twist it and clip it. This is our side panel. Slide the clip up under and we do the same thing on the opposite side. So you can see right here, this is the hair that wants to fall in the back like that. All this is going to fall into the back. We're mimicking that hairline right there. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite. All right. So right here down to the hairline. Ooh, nailed it. It's always a good feeling. Probably because I just did it for the last hour. I'm warmed up. So all this hair is going to fall into the back. So we're basically separating the head and all the different curves, right? So this hair here all wants to fall into the back. It's also all the same density from here to here. This is all the same all the way around this section. And then this section forward is all the same density all the way forward, all the way across like that. I'm going to take that little corner out all the way across. You want all this to be the same density across. And then the fringe wants to fall to the front. So you've got this panel, this panel, this panel, and then you have same density, same density, same density. So as I'm working through the haircut, I want to know, and I want to be aware of the curves of the head horizontally. And I want to be aware of the head vertically as well. So now we're going to go in and start layering this haircut. I believe we're doing a textured shag today. Like I said, this sectioning is what I do for, for everything. I want to cut textured layers. I'm gonna already I'm thinking I want point cutting and I want different techniques that are gonna help enhance texture in this cut So we're gonna start by creating a little bit of concave layering we get to now We're gonna start cutting some layers. So I'm gonna tilt her head down uh, Key for me is to always just make sure that I'm comfortable when I'm cutting hair uh, That's gonna make me the most consistent So I don't want to tilt her head too far because I'm cutting with elevation So obviously having her hair more straight up and down or even tilted back would give me a little more comfort But I like being able to have have my sectioning held for me as well. So I'm gonna do vertical, straight down, center back, straight down, center back. I'm gonna section the one side off. We're just gonna work on one side first. So just like that. So then I take my next section. So there we go. So now we're working with about quarter of an inch, half an inch of hair, comb it out. Not really worried about the bottom. So I'm just gonna take from occipital bone into my hand. I don't really care. I'm gonna cut into that dry. So here we go, concave layers, and I'm gonna point cut. Let me back. So standing behind the head, bring everything out, concave layers, cutting short, point cutting, short to long. I don't care about cutting past my second knuckle because I'm looking for loose tension. So that doesn't really matter to me. Now this will skinny up the hairline, the outer perimeter. So be aware of that. If they have fine hair, then you may want to do a little uh, less I just cut this section here. Now I'm going to move and pivot here. I'm going to go here, following the round of the head. Pull this hair over, take out my section. So in 2020, I know things have been crazy. I'm crazy too. And I've started pushing my guide to my new hair. I know, but I'm changing my thought process a little bit. So I'm only going to be being here. I'm pushing it to there, literally that much. I want it to go over and kind of meet the new hair in the middle so that, and this is kind of, I think it was a Ben Brown tip. Love that guy. I learn a lot watching him. Instead of worrying about pulling this hair over to the guide, I'm just shifting the guide over just a little bit. My last comb will be towards my body and then I'll shift my fingers up, concave, short, along. 
point cutting to get a soft line. Oh, uh, we got some people on. I love it. Keep sharing, guys. Keep sharing. Your name is Sharon. Share twice. Same thing. Pushing the guide a little bit. Last comb towards me. Up in the air. Point cutting across. Now, the beauty of the sectioning that we did is that I'm not worried at all about creating a hole or anything like that because we're all we're working with the same hairline, same density throughout. Combing the hair up. A lot of you guys are asking about the comb. This is a YS Park 339 Pride comb. They were limited edition. I do believe for some reason, I could be totally wrong. We were possibly getting a few more in. They only made so many, so I'm not sure. So be on the lookout. If you go on our website, you can always go through there and mark if something's out of stock for us to let you know when it comes in stock. So you can just, so the last section, again, beauty of this, and it's all the same density. So no holes are gonna happen. No one has to worry about that. Bringing the hair up, straight out from where it wants to live, cutting that round. All right, so now we've got some point cut layers throughout. Now, here's the thing. It's gonna be really skinny down here. This length, I'm not keeping. I'm cutting the length later. Um, I don't worry about the length at the beginning of a haircut. I worry about the length when we start working perimeter dry. So now I'm gonna split this in half, comb all this hair that I've already cut out of the way. Got a little bit for a guideline in the back here. And now I'm gonna pivot, take my section. And again, at that occipital bone, split it. I don't need that underneath. Keep the density there. Up in the air, point cutting straight out from where it lives. A little bit of the old, push it away, grab some new, cut it at the occipital bone, bring that hair. Up. Last comb is towards the guide, straight out from where it lives, to the side. All right, so now do a little cross check, section around. Yeah, I think we're good. So you can see all the texture, all the layers starting to pop through that haircut. Super fun. So now we've cut the back. You can see the layers popping through, tons of movement going on. This is super long. We're gonna cut that length off. It's gonna be about this long throughout. I wanna cut off all that weak hair. Now I'm gonna connect. Actually, let me start with the that down. All right. I wanna connect these two panels. I comb that hair down. I'm gonna disconnect it in the temple area. So you could section off that temple area if you wanted to. The reason I'm gonna do that is because now I know I'm working with this density instead of this density. So I need to change things up a bit. So just to give you guys a visual, I'm gonna show you, I'm taking out temple area. I'm not gonna cut it at all. I can put a clip in there. You could twist it up, clip it away if you want to. I'm gonna put two in there just cause Sometimes I can't trust myself. So right there like that. And now what I'm gonna do is this, we said it was gonna be an easy layered cut today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this hair up in the air, just like this, comb it all up, condensed cutting, spin it. So just like that. So what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna take this hair and I'm gonna comb it over to me. I'm gonna take a guide from the center point here. So here's my guide. Got my guide, comb all this hair up, up towards me, just like that into this center. And I'm gonna point cut this hair off. Over direct it to the center top. I'm doing cutting this horizontally like this. What's that gonna look like vertically? Anybody tell me? So when I hold everything like this and I cut it horizontally like this into a panel and you see it flat in front of the head, look at the over direction that's happening throughout the section. You've got this pulling further away. You've got this pulling from closer. So when I let this go and I look at it vertical, so let me just take a tiny bit of this vertically. Look at that line, it's short to long. So that line to me is like a concave layer. So if I were to hold this out, cut it concave, it's funny pulling everything together because I was looking at it in a horizontal line like this. Most people would say concave, you gotta lift that elbow up, you gotta turn it, but you can hold everything, cut it just like this horizontally. But then when you look at it, it's the same as cutting it at that short to long concave effect. There it is. So that's the first section, condensed cutting. It matches up with the, the horizontal and vertical, uh, what you're doing with at both times. So being aware of what's happening to the head at all times. You can see the layers that we just put in, in one section. And now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'll take out, wet down the section, and I'll separate it again, right around that parietal ridge, just well, below the parietal ridge, above the temple, double clip it, one here, one in the back, pull the head off again. And now I'm on the other side of the head and I'm pulling everything up and over to this side. I can grab my section as a guide now, instead of from the back. Now I can see exactly what I cut on the opposite side. So they match up and I'll point cut my condensed section. Now I'm gonna recomb because I wanna make sure that I got that length right in the back, a little shorter. And now bring that section up and I'm just gonna do some uh, tense vertical point cutting just to soften. You guys are killing it with this. We've got our fringe section and we wanna do a curtain fringe, right? That's what we said. So I'm gonna show you guys quick little easy curtain fringe technique. I'm gonna separate the sides and the, the fringe for now. In the dry cut, I'll probably combine them a little bit, but an inch wide, separate these two pieces here. And now you gotta decide where do you want the curtain fringe to start? Do you want it to start at the nose and peel that way? I'm gonna do that today, cause honestly, I don't wanna, I cut bangs in every mannequin I have and it becomes almost useless. I wanna just soften this a little bit and then uh, we can cut other bangs on it at a different date. Here is the deal. I'm right here. I'm going to comb this hair out right out 
in front of the head and then I'm just gonna slide cut into it, give it a slight bit of elevation and I'm just gonna work. I can see where the nose is. So I'm just gonna kind of work and peel into the hair. I want it to be a nice broken line, um, but I want it to be kind of layered. So it, it pops a little bit. I bring the, this section over past the nose. So this is kind of the key here. Don't bring it just to the nose or just straight out because it'll become too short. A curtain fringe to me has a really nice opening at the face. So it opens up really nice and curves in, has a little bit of extra length. So I take this hair at the root, bring it over to me past the nose, and then I'm just gonna softly connect this hair together, cutting some short to long pieces. And then look at the length that we end up with that with right there, how that kind of peels out and opens up around the face. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. I'll just comb it forward this connect in just like this, comb the hair over like that. And I start working the opposite side of the nose through the section. So that's a good start to our wet cut. Now I'll let down both sides here and we're gonna start to blow dry. I'm gonna find my, my trusty blow dryer over here. Joyco Blonde Life Brilliant Glow. Just smooth the hair a little bit. I like to do for the blow dry and then, all right, here we go. scissors. These are both uh, my, my scissor. So here's the difference. On a wet cutting scissor, you can see how skinny the blade is right there. And then on the dry cutting scissor, look how fat the blade is. It has a different formation. The fatter the blade, the more powerful the blade is, because obviously the more metal, it's not going to bend the metal at all. Uh, the longer a scissor gets, the weaker the tip gets because the metal gets less. So this just kind of allows you to slide and glide through the hair. Also, the blade is created to slide through the hair a lot easier. And then also with your wet cutting scissor, when you're cutting with a wet scissor it tends to dull your scissor faster because this is meant to be a softer blade that grips the hair so when you cut dry hair it's a little crunchier feel it can just dull this a little bit faster so this blade is meant to slide through so i like to have both so that when i do both cuts i can um I, i'm not dulling my my good scissor not my good scissor i'm not dulling my precision scissor and i'm just working when i get over here to the shoulder where i would have to take the hair and bring it and elevate it out then what i'll do is i'll have her slightly tilt her head side and then to the left a little Little bit. And what that'll do is as long as the panel that I'm working on, the side panel and not the back, it's another great thing about shoulders, you know where the front. So now I'm gonna go in and point cut because I do not want this to be a straight blunt line. You could, sometimes the combination of texture and blunt is cool. But like I said, this back portion, I would probably cut against her back, not in my fingers. Now I'm sitting on my stool. Thank you, Minerva. I'm gonna cut across just like I would if I, she had shoulders. I like using a cutting stool off. That was another question that came up today. Anytime I'm working on perimeters or longer hair, this is a stool. I'm gonna cut the side like this. So I'm just point cutting. Now, listen, if she had shoulders, remember, I'd tilt her head like this and back to the side. Her shoulder would be right here and I would bring the hair in front slightly and I would just make sure that I didn't elevate too much and I cut through. And now I do the same thing on the opposite side, have her tilt kind of away and turn her head and then her shoulder would be sitting over there and I can connect. Now I bring her back up. I say, do we match? Close enough. Uh, you guys are gonna love this cut. It's turning out awesome. Lower her down a little bit. How are we feeling? Let me know 100% in the chat if you like it. If you don't like it, you'll love the next one. So now I wanna add a little extra texture. I'm gonna show you guys a technique that we do in week four of our fundamental cutting courses. Uh, and here it is. This is the stroking technique. So I go just like this. And now I've already got texture in here, but I just wanna create a little extra stuff throughout. So I bring it forward and then it's a half open or it's, it's a full close. And I'm just gonna connect those bottom pieces. And I'll just keep bringing the hair forward and cutting it. This will help open up the face a little bit, add a little bit more layering to it. Tons of texture. So you can see, I'll show you the two sides. So you'll, you'll be able to see like how this side kind of pops out and this one just appears a little bit lengthier, I guess you could say. Uh, so we're gonna do the same thing over here, bringing the hair over and I'm just gonna cut. That just gives you that little bit of extra texture. And now the last little thing, another week four little fundamental trick is a little tease cutting into this fringe just to soften it even more. I don't even know if you need to do that too much, but I just like adding a little softness to the edge of my cuts. All right. And now we're going to style it up. So I've already blown it dry. It's already smooth, uh, but that doesn't mean it's styled, right? So I'm going to go right here. This will obviously be off of her face. I'm going to blow dry. I'm going to use this guy here. 
So let me heat this up. So that's just giving me a little base of product. And now when I go into her hair, I'll have a little extra hold. I'm gonna twist this back off of her face. Do it. All right, now we're gonna go in texture spray. Texture. Now I got the texture spray in there. Now I can kind of mess it up just a little bit. The curtain fringe going. And then obviously a little hairspray will hold the rest of the pieces. All right, so you can see how that curtain fringe kind of comes into play. Then you've got these layers throughout the sides and the back that are just nice and soft. You can even cut into this a little bit if you wanted. I kind of like that disconnection in there. And then you got the layers in the back popping through. Fullness, the body, but the curtain fringe is for the win there. Thank you to Minerva Beauty. You guys are the best. I really, really appreciate uh, you guys supporting Freeson Education. Go get your furniture and all your tools and all your stuff from Minerva Beauty and the cutting stool. Go get a cutting stool right now. MinervaBeauty.com. Thanks, guys. It's going to be a great day.